Hi, my name is Andy Hunter. I'm the CEO and founder of Bookshop.org. I want to tell you a little bit about what Bookshop is for those of you who aren't familiar. And then I'll talk a little bit about what's the point? Um, what are we doing? What's the point of Bookshop? And overall, what are we doing with our industry and the culture and the business of books going forward into the future? Um, so first, I'm going to show you a quick presentation on bookshop.org. And then I'll talk a bit more about sustainability. So Bookshop is an e-commerce revolution for local bookstores. Um, here's a quick look at what our homepage looks like. We make it really easy. One of the things that we wanted to do is just keep it super simple. Um, one thing I know about customers is they don't like getting confused and they don't like getting frustrated. So if they want to look, if they're looking for a book, we just want them to remember the name bookshop.org, go here, be able to find a book, search for a book, buy it and get out and make it as simple as possible. Um, I think that's extremely important when designing any digital experience is to make it simple and pleasant, a fun place to be. You can see the colors are bright. It's a good place that makes people happy. And that's what the overall point is. And that's what makes people coming back. The fact that uh, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see we've raised $17.5 million for local bookstores. Uh, it's actually closer to 20 million now um, globally, including the US, United Kingdom, and we recently launched in beta in Spain. Now, our efforts, that money has kept many, many stores, hundreds of stores in business during the COVID-19 pandemic when they were forced to shut their doors. So it's been extremely meaningful for us to be running this business and be making that work and being effective during that time. Now, so we want to support bookstores by helping them grow online revenue. And the reason we want to do that is because bookstores are essential to a thriving community around books. You know, and, and right now, Amazon is threatening that community. If you look at the graph on the left, that's the market share of bookstores, physical bookstores. You can see they've sold $18.5 billion worth of books in 2010. The graph doesn't go to 2021, but by 2021, that number is well under 10 billion. So that's $8 billion worth of revenue for physical book retailers that has evaporated. In the meantime, Amazon's been growing at 8% year over year. And if they continue to grow at this rate, in 2025, Amazon is going to control 80% of the books sold in the US, which will be not good for the culture around books. And, and won't be good for authors, it won't be good for consumers, it won't be good for publishers to have Amazon have that much market power and that much control over what people read, which in a real sense is also control over what people learn, what people think, um, where people's imaginations go, and all of the great things that books do, which we can't trust any single retailer to preserve. So it's not really about whether Amazon's good or bad, you might have your own opinion, but you don't want any single party to be in control of 80% of a industry as precious and important to human consciousness and our survival and our progress as a species as books have been. So, you know, bookstores, they're often really small. They sometimes literally are mom and pop businesses. They don't necessarily know how to build a website, much less a good e-commerce platform that's gonna make their customers happy and keep them coming back and effectively compete with Amazon. And on the same time, like publishers, authors, fans of books, they need some place that they can link to when they're promoting books online that isn't Amazon. And up until now, there hasn't really been a good solution, not a good universal blanket solution that could have um, helped thousands of bookstores and be just as easy and pleasant to shop from as Amazon. So that's our goal. And you know, bookshop's really easy to set up. You can do it in half an hour. If you're a bookstore, you can create a bookshop.org storefront in about as much time as it takes to set up a Facebook page. Within a half an hour, you can have a banner, you can have a bio, you can have your social linked, you can create recommendation lists, and you can start selling books to your customers. And you know what the cost is? Zero. No cost whatsoever for stores. So there's no risk for stores which was super important when the pandemic hit. 
We had 250 stores on the platform in February of 2020. By June of 2020, we had 1,100 stores on the platform. They were able to quickly adopt the platform and start selling books to their customers um, because it was so simple and because it was free. And because of the way the bookshop works, the orders from a customer goes directly to a wholesaler, which in the US is Ingram, in the UK it's Gardner's. That wholesaler gets the book to the customer. So the bookstores don't actually have to touch a book. For the bookstores, the profit margin is pure profit. And we give 30% of the cover price of every sale to the bookstore. That's 30% of the cover price. So if we discount, which we occasionally do for promotions or to be competitive with Amazon, the discount doesn't affect the store. It affects us, but we're sending about 82% of our profit margin right now directly to independent bookstores because we're a mission-based organization. We're not in it for the money. We're in it to preserve the culture and the great work that independent bookstores do. So a few things about being on a shared platform and why it's better than, uh, I think somebody said, uh, a thousand small boats. Why wouldn't you want a thousand, 10,000 small boats where each bookstore has to create their own website, has to either learn Shopify or learn HTML or do it all themselves? Well, there's a few good reasons not to do it that way. One of which is Google. A lot of people's online shopping experience starts with a Google search. If you're in a shared platform that combines the market power of, in our case, 1,200 stores, you can rank in the top five of Google. Um, if you're a small store trying to do it yourself, you're probably not gonna rank in the top five of Google for a search for a new book. When we improve the platform, it improves everybody's website. When we create a new user account, a new customer comes in, that customer's account's details are saved for every store. So that means if the customer wants to buy from another store, they don't have to re-enter all of their information, which often slows people down. Often it actually stops people from converting. Um, it sends people back to Amazon because they don't want to have to enter their address and their credit card information again. Um, so it removes that frustration. Um, and the fact that the fulfillment is reliable, we get orders that come in before noon, we get them out the same day. And stores can get books to customers in three days without actually ever having to touch the book. Well, three days is really comparable to what Amazon does. So the customers can have a great experience. That makes them come back. They don't feel anymore that they're giving something up by shopping locally or from buying from a local store. They're actually getting the same convenience and the same customer service that they would, um, or better customer service, in fact. Um, we also have lists book recommendation lists that go viral. And we can send people to Bookstore Finder, which allows them to choose a bookstore. And we get over 2,000 people every single day to that Bookstore Finder. And all of our recommendations are from human beings, which is another great thing. Amazon is trying to give you recommendations from their algorithm. But why do you actually read a book? Think about the books that you read and you buy. You're usually buying them because a person recommends them to you. You know, that's what gets us excited about books, somebody that we care about, or a magazine, a newspaper like the New York Times recommends it. That's why you buy a book, because it's recommended by a human being, not because a computer tells you that you might like it, or that somebody pays that computer to tell you you might like it. All of our recommendations are personal and human, and that creates an atmosphere in bookshop, which is like, it's a thriving hub of people who love books. And that atmosphere is really contagious and it makes people happy and it makes them happy to go shop there. We grow partly by our affiliate program. You know, before Bookshop came along, Amazon's affiliate program worked really well for publications. If you wrote about books for major magazines, major websites like BuzzFeed, the New York Times, you could link to Amazon. Amazon would pay you four and a half percent of the sale of anybody that bought one of those books. And that becomes a big revenue source for online media. Well, the problem with that, of course, is that it creates a funnel as wide as the internet. It's all driving customers to Amazon. Um, so we created an affiliate program where somebody links to us, they'll get 10% of that cover price, not 4.5%. And we give a 10% matching donation to independent bookstores. So we're giving away 20% of every sale 
with our affiliate program, and that's supporting the publication writing about books and it supports independent bookstores at the same time. And this has been wildly successful. In our first year, we sold 8 million books through it. And by now it's a lot bigger number than that. And it supports publications that write about books, which is also really important to our ecosystem. We want publications to write about books. We want author interviews and book reviews to be thriving. So affiliate program is great for everybody. This is just an example, a few examples of publications that use Bookshop now for their affiliate links. And you know, when we started raising money for Bookshop, I encountered tons of skepticism and very, very few people who I pitched it to actually wanted to invest in it. And they would always ask like, how are you gonna compete with Amazon? Like, Amazon is so rich and so powerful and they're very efficient and they sell books for very little money. Like they're really cheap. You can't match them in price. Um, so how can you ever win? Well, our strategy to win is really to bring together small communities. So a small bookstore in Maine or in Texas, I'd have a pretty small customer base, maybe a thousand people, maybe 500 people. A book club or a school or an author, they might just have a few hundred fans. But if you get them all on the platform, then you multiply their audiences into a combined audience. And in the first 18 months, we hit over 30,000 affiliates, including bookstores and publications and authors and influencers that resulted in over a million and a half customers. And that number is even higher now. And all those customers are buying from Bookshop instead of Amazon because it's the right thing to do because they're socially conscious customers. And that brings me to kind of the theme of the conference, which is sustainability and publishing. And you know, the difference between Bookshop and a lot of startups is most startups talk about disruption. They're really excited to get into an industry that is kind of stayed in its ways, that isn't operating efficiently and saying, I'm gonna disrupt that industry. I'm gonna, through technology, be more efficient and I'm gonna steal that industry out from underneath them. I'm gonna steal that business and bring it to me and disrupt that old dinosaur. A well, problem with that mindset is that I love many of the dinosaurs in the book world. I love the old authors. I love the old books. I love the bookstores. I love the booksellers that are dedicating their lives to talking about books, getting people excited about books. I love the human connection that happens over books at bookstores and the activism, activism and, and the advocacy that bookstores are giving in the world of books. If they go away, if Amazon successfully disrupts them, then we're all gonna be in trouble. It's gonna be like a much sadder world. And I think ultimately technology and innovation is a means to an end, it's not an end in itself. And the end that we should be working towards is an end of like human happiness and sustainability and creating structures that are conducive to life and happiness and fulfillment and human connection and all these things that bookstores actually do very well. So we're using technology to reinforce an industry that we care about instead of disrupt it. Now that doesn't mean that there isn't a lot of good that technology can do in the book world. And I think some of it you're gonna hear about today, things like printing books on order when we need them and printing them where we need them so that we don't have to print 100,000 copies of a book, put 50,000 in a warehouse, and then in some cases, ship that book 3,000 miles to a customer. That's a very inefficient process that's bad for the environment, bad for the earth, bad for humanity. We don't need to save that part of the book industry. We can create systems where we can print books near where people live, get them to them quickly with a much lower carbon footprint and with much less environmental destruction because you're not overprinting and then pulping. So that's an exciting thing that people at Canon are working on. Bookshop allows people to efficiently sell books online in a process that would have been much harder before we came along to create your own website 
and to make it a good experience and to sell and build up your customer base. So there's a lot of great things that technology can do um, that I'm really excited about that will solve problems in our industry. But at the same time, it should all be in the service of preserving and supporting and reinforcing what's wonderful about our industry. And that's, I think, the spirit of the Future Book Forum. And I'm happy to be here.